We've had a lucky break in the weather this evening, so we're gonna slip out and get one of our fields burned, as well as some brush piles that have been stacking up for some time. Um, we haven't had a lot of time to do this yet because of the weather and DNR burn restrictions, but we're gonna show you a little bit what that's like. Fire is really an important tool for us as rural property owners uh, to help manage some areas that we can't mow or take care of otherwise. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, it is spring, it's uh, late March, and the reason I'm rushing outside here real quick is we're gonna try to get some burning on our property done tonight. So, fire danger has been kind of high, and the area where we live in is regulated by the DNR, so we can only burn basically when they, uh, when they allow it. There's a lot of woods around here, and you know, the chances of a fire getting out of control are always out there. So. Um, last few days, fire danger has been real high and they haven't been allowing anyone to burn. However, they just recently um, changed that. Yesterday we couldn't burn, today we can. So, the thing was, it looked like rain all day and it actually started sprinkling. But uh, the rain was not as bad as uh, we thought it would. It only drizzled for a little bit, the grass is still dry, and it's supposed to rain all week. So we can burn starting at six o'clock, which is about half an hour from now. So we're gonna scramble, get some stuff together. We have our plan in place already. We know how to burn, our fire breaks are all good. Um, I'm not very worried about fire getting out of control at our property just because of the way it's laid out and where we have wet areas and stuff like that and mowed trails. Um, we have a lot of pre-existing fire breaks in place already. So we're gonna get some stuff together here and uh, light some stuff on fire and we'll kind of show you how we do it. Should be fun. So this is our water pump setup. This is just a homemade, homemade uh, drum, 55 gallon drum. It's got a just a North Star electric pump that runs off a 12 volt connected down to the ranger like that, nothing fancy. Um, it's got a down tube that goes to the bottom to suck up the water. It's got a drain there. And then it just runs on the hose pressure. So let the air get out of the hose. There we go. But as you can see, it's got pretty good range. Alright, so what are you doing? So uh, we're going to fill up the drip torch here. So this is what we use to light the fires. It's a great tool if you're going to do any burning, definitely well worth, uh, about $150 investment, but well worth it. So we're going to do a mixture of uh, diesel and gasoline. Um, I think it, it's going to burn pretty good, pretty easily today. So I'm thinking we'll do maybe like 80% gasoline, about 20%, excuse me, 80% diesel and 20% gasoline. Rosie's excited. Aren't you, Rose? I know. Big fire day. Big fire day. We haven't had a fire day in a while. I know, because of the COVID. So last year they were claiming that the COVID uh, would, uh, that we needed as many of the first responders for fighting COVID. So they said that they didn't want them diverted if we had our emergency fire services out fighting wildfires. So they would not allow us to burn last year at all. The, uh, the one thing we'll have to watch today is I actually wish there was just a little bit of a breeze because when there's a little bit of a breeze, like maybe five miles an hour, it just makes directional burning easier. So there's really no breeze here, so the fire is gonna be a little bit more difficult to control. So it's something you gotta watch for, but we've just had so few opportunities to burn, uh, we're just gonna have to do it. And actually, if you look at the graphs over here, this is how a fire break works basically, right? So we have longer stuff here that'll burn, probably burn, and eventually then we get down to the shorter stuff. So this, the lawn here, it's greening up, it's really short. It's gonna act as a fire break. You're not gonna get fire uh, traveling across this grass very far. It might burn a couple inches in and then it's gonna smolder out. And it'll look really cool. It'll look really cool.
All right, so now you can see the wind has shifted again. This is the problem when there's just no wind. It's hard to control the direction, so you have to be really careful. But the wind shifted, so now that fire that was originally gonna be our backfire is burning towards us. Not a big deal. Things aren't going ideally. Ideally, you'd wanna have a nice perimeter going, and then you light your head fire, and it just swoops all the way through nice and quick. But again, this is the best that we can do right now. So it's going all right. So it's about a week after we burned and you can see behind me things are uh, still nice and charred but it's uh, kind of cool there's little green sprouts coming up already so it's amazing how fast this stuff regenerates. Conditions weren't great for our burn but we got accomplished what we wanted to. The wind wasn't cooperating that made things a little bit tricky but we got the job done. I would have liked to burn more. I would have liked to take care of some brush behind the house besides those couple piles. And then I've got some other fields too that I wouldn't have mind burning. But uh, with the conditions and it's been raining all week, I think everything is just greening up too fast. And you know, when you combine that with uh, pretty strict restrictions on when we can actually do prescribed fire, it, it just makes it tough to find time. So, but the main goal was to get this, uh, this acre or so done down here and, and we got that done. One thing I will add is if you have never done this before, find some help. Don't just go out and start lighting stuff on fire. It's not a good idea. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes planning, preparation, and uh, contingencies, safety mechanisms that go into this. Um, honestly, the burning is the least amount of work. It's the easiest part. It's all the planning that goes into this. Um, I think a lot of people get themselves in trouble because they just go out, light things on fire, and, and think that they can do it. But um, I learned from people who did this professionally. I learned from people who burned for the state, uh, for the DNR, and who did uh, well, prairie restoration and used prescribed fire for that. So, you know, find somebody who knows what they're doing, go take a class, do something like that. Um, you know, don't just, uh, because you saw a video on the internet, think that you can light your, light your stuff on fire. It's not a good idea. Fire can be really dangerous and you wouldn't want to uh, be responsible for something that got out of control. Thanks again for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video again. If you did, hit the like button below. Leave some comments uh, if you got any questions and hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.